praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're rejoicing and glad in it, and I'm rejoicing and giving praise to our God for this glorious day. Thank you for joining us. I want to start off today by doing two things. Number one, let me give a shout out to my friends in the Bahamas. I had a wonderful opportunity to minister in the Bahamas this past week, and I met so many of our followers and people who support us and view us every week. And I want to give a shout out to all of the Bahama, Bahamians and, and share what a great time I had in the Bahamas this past week. And I pray God continue, continues to bless all of you in a most substantial way. And then I want to do number two and shout out that I'm going to be this coming week in Johannesburg, South Africa. And if you are in Johannesburg or anywhere near Johannesburg, come and visit us. The details of where we'll be is at the Rhema Church, and you can get that on our website. So if you're in Johannesburg, uh, in South Africa, come and be with us. I'm going to be ministering today from Psalm 103, part two of our message, The Benefits of Being Saved. There are benefits of being a Christian and following the Lord Jesus. And Psalm 103 gives us a string of them listed there. And I'm going to be doing part two of that message today. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified. And we honor you as we cry out in the name of the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name for your favor, for your power and might. We intercede for the persons whose hand we hold, whose name we have calling out before your altar, that you will step into the center of whatever they're going through and work a miracle on their behalf. Work it out for your glory and honor in the name of Jesus, we pray. That is our prayer today, almighty God. Save somebody that needs salvation. Reclaim a sinner. Reclaim a, a believer who has slid away. Draw them back to your kingdom. Give us assurance. I pray for that person who has doubts and questions. Plant believers. Edify the saints of God. That your name we get all of the glory. Bind the devil. We pray for our brothers who join us around the nation and around the world through the internet. God, transcend location and place. Speak to them in the most profound way. Father, in the name of the Lord, I thank you. Let us be your mouthpiece and your conduit for these next few moments that your name would again get the glory and the honor. And we thank you ahead of time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. A change is coming for me. If I stand strong and believe, there's no reason to doubt. I know He's working it out. It's turning around for me. And it won't always be like this Cause the Lord will perfect that concerning me Yeah, and sooner or later We'll turn in my favor It's turning around for me can I say it one more time? It won't always be like Yeah, the Lord will perfect that concern me And sooner It will turn in my Sooner or later It will turn in my It won't always be like Yes, Lord, cause the Lord will perfect that concerning Everybody say to her It will turn in my Sooner or later it will turn in my favor, oh Lord, it's turning around. Can I say it just one more time? 
Perfecting that concerning me. Look at your neighbor and say, sooner or later. All right, turn to Psalm 103. This is part two of what I started last week. This is part two of what I started last week called The Benefits of Being Saved. And we started off talking last week about the fact that God gives us benefits to be saved. We are, we are saved um, and salvation, what God offers us with salvation is more than just protection from hell. Even though that's enough right there to get saved by itself. But, but I thought I should have got a few amen, more, more amens than that, especially the 12 o'clock crowd. Y'all should be shouting that salvation protects you from hell. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you ought to be saying amen louder than that. So last week we gave the first five benefits of being saved. They're all the ones that I'm mentioning, there, there are many more throughout the scriptures, but uh, I'm looking at, I, let, I, I shared five of them from last uh, Sunday, and I'm going to give another five today. Let me, re, let me repeat what the first five were um, uh, there in, uh, again, these first few verses. The first one we gave is that he forgives us. Somebody say, he forgives us. Uh, verse, let, me, let me read this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 1, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who, number one, who forgives all your iniquities, verse 3. Number two, who heals all your diseases. He heals us. Somebody say he's a healer. healer. Number three, it says in verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction. He redeems us. He's a redeemer. He redeems us. And it also says in verse 4, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Uh, point four is he crowns us. And we talked about the point that crowns means he surrounds us. We are surrounded by God. As a matter of fact, the verse says he, he crowns us with a loving kindness and tender mercies. He surrounds us with his loving kindness and tender mercies. That's just, just those first four are enough to shout about all by themselves. And verse 5 gives us the fifth one, who satisfies your mouth with good things. He's a God that satisfies us with good things. And that's a, that's a great part, too, because some of you have been looking for satisfaction in things and people. But things and people will not satisfy you. Yeah, thank all 17 of y'all for that rousing amen. I want to save you some drama and some pain. And I, I know some of y'all wanted to shout over the fact that you can't be satisfied with people or things. I know you wanted to shout about the people part, but the person who you thought was going to bring you satisfaction is sitting next to you and you don't want to say it too loud. <laughs> Human beings cannot satisfy you. God, God is the one in a relationship with him. He satisfies us with good things. Somebody say good things. Good things. Here's the other five. Let me give you the last five, then I'll be out of your hair. It starts at verse number six. Here's number six. Here's, here's number six. Is in verse number six. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. 
There's number six, he executes righteousness and just, justice. That's, an, that's, that's um, a powerful point that God, the word execute means the Lord will do or make what is right and just. He will take what's been wronged and make it right. Amen. And he will, he will execute justice. That means he's the one who sits on the throne, hears the case, and renders a verdict. Now that, that's, man, somebody should have been jumping and shouting and running around here today on that because some of you today are in court right now. You're dealing with situations and circumstances beyond your control. And the word of the Lord to you is this, that he will make what's wrong right. Now, now the problem is, here's, here's the thing about God. Let me tell you this real quick about God. Here's the thing about God. If God sees it, you're trying to, if you're trying to play judge, if you're trying to be the one to execute judgment, if you're trying to be the one to make it right and pay people back and not speak to folk and cuss folk out and take in this law cases and all that, if you're the one trying to make it right, God takes his hands off and backs up and, see, and says this, I see you got this. And, and here's what he told me to say to you about your situation. How's that working out for you? I can't get no help right here with nobody. I'm trying to make y'all understand that if you take your hands off of it, the God, when you are saved and you belong to the Lord, the verse right here says, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. If you've been pressed, defrauded, violated, treated wrong, somebody didn't do you right, take your hands off. God says, I'm going to fight the battle for you. I got two people standing up, three people standing up, praise the Lord, four people standing up right there, amen, praise, praise the Lord. I got four people, five people who identify with this profound truth and powerful. And that's, that's awesome because in life you're going to be treated wrong. In life there are going to be injustices. In life you're going to be oppressed. There's no promise that you won't have no drama, no pain, no mistreatment. That, that, that's going to happen. And the fact that this scripture says is that the God we serve, when you are surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, this passage says he executes justice and righteousness. He'll step up, fight the battle, plead the case, and render the verdict on your behalf. Now that's enough to shout right there. He executes righteousness and judgment. That's number six. Here's number seven. I wish, you know, that, that's enough to just, I could go through the Bible and talk about people who got treated wrong and had been taken advantage of and people had, had been hurt and harmed and God brought them back from their drama and circumstance and stood them up and fought their case. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Maybe you've been fired. Maybe somebody took you to court. Maybe somebody lied on you. Don't worry. Don't get depressed. Don't cry. Don't get worried about it. Just step back and say, God, go ahead and take care of this thing for me. Do I have any witnesses here today that know that anybody here who believes about the God that I'm talking about, that he will fight the case for you. He will fight the battle for you. Amen. He, he's the one, he executes it, he brings it, he makes it happen, he'll do it, amen. He'll hear the case and make the verdict. He will render the verdict on your behalf. Here's number seven, that was number six. Number seven is right here in verse seven. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel in verse seven. Let me read that to you again. He makes known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. There's something to shout about right there too. Somebody say, I hear what he's saying to me. He's talking to me. Somebody say that out loud. He's talking to me. What is he saying? He, make, he makes known his ways and his acts. Now, why is that important? What are you talking about, Pastor? Why, how is that a benefit? Here, here's this. When, when a person is not a believer, they don't know how God works. They don't know the ways of God. And here's what God says. I make known to my children my ways and my acts. I will reveal to them. And here's what life is about. And if y'all can get this right here, if you, get, if you don't hear nothing else I have to say today, get this. Write this down. Uh, tweet this. Um, Instagram this. 
um, put this on the um, whatever the social media stuff is, put this out there, get this, that really what all of life is about, if I can get you to get this, all of life is about learning about how, how God operates. Everything that you've gone through in life, it's God trying to slowly get you to see how he operates, what his ways are. That's what all of life is about. If you can learn these two things about life, one, if you can learn this, all of the stuff you've gone through in life, it's God trying to attempt to show you how he operates. Everything you've gone through, everything in your past, every challenge, every problem, God's trying to show you his hand. He's trying to show you how he moves. He's trying to show you how he opens up doors, how he closes doors. That's number one. If you could just learn his ways, learn, matter of fact, this text says his ways and his acts. The ways is, when you learn his ways, you learn how God normally operates. How he normally does things. His acts is every now and then God will do an act. Every now and then God will open up the Red Sea. Every now and then God will do an act. Are you listening to me? But he says, I want you to learn how you can anticipate. When you learn God's ways, you can face a circumstance and know what to do because you know what God's character is about. And see, people who don't have a walk with God don't understand his ways. So you get all frustrated, bent out of shape, mad, upset, angry, try to take it in your own power, try to work it out in your own ability. But, but when you know his ways, see, here's how that works. Here's how it works. When you know his ways, you know that when you turn your plate down and fast and talk to God and pray, he will answer you in, in due season. When you know his ways, you know that where you are right now and what you're going through at the present moment, it will not always be like this. You know he will perfect that concerning you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying today. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you, I forgot to tell you the second point of what's important because they, they both go together. The two things go together. I've told you life is about learning God's ways, but it's also about learning that God ultimately allows you to go through what you're going through because he's trying to shape your character. Did y'all notice the amens got a little lower on that point right there? Because people by and large don't understand that God's trying to shape your character. He's trying to squeeze the nastiness out of you. He's trying to squeeze that dishonesty out of you and make you an honest person. Everything you're going through, he's trying to get you to a place where you stop leaning to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen right there. That's what life is about. It's about understanding the circumstances of trying to open your eyes to see his hand working in your life. He's trying to get your eyes to pop open, get your brain to pop open, get your spirit to pop open. You're going through hell and high water because he's trying to drive you out of depending on yourself and depending on him and calling on him and crying out to him and knowing that you need him and know that he is the answer to everything that you face in life. That's what life, that's what it's all about. And the sooner you learn that, the sooner you learn that he's allowing you to go through what you're going through to learn about him, then things can get better for you. Lean over to the person sitting next to you saying, he's preaching better than you saying amen. Go ahead, say something. And, and this man says one of the benefits of being saved and walking with God, he makes known his ways and his acts. And I'm shouting and celebrating because that ways, God is showing me his ways. I know that, I know that there's a way that the world operates and there's a way that God operates. The world operates in that direction. God operates in that direction. <laughs> Ooh, y'all not hear what I'm saying. Uh, the world says be greedy, be nasty, be self-centered. 
push everybody else down, lie on everybody else to push yourself up to get to the top of the line, run to the front of the line, to go to the top of the ladder. That's what the world says. God says, my ways are not like that. If you want to go my way, go to the bottom of the ladder. Go, go to the back of the line. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. He says, my ways, here's what God says, when you operate by my ways, when you humble yourself and be a servant rather than trying to get everybody to serve you, God says, in due season, I will elevate you and lift you up. I'll fight your battle. I'll answer your prayers. I'll work the miracles. I'll elevate. I'll lift you. I will work miracles on your behalf. That's what that's about. And that's, that's what the ways are about. So let me roll on. He says he wants you to know his ways and his acts. Here's number eight. I'm, I'm almost finished here. She says, I only got ten. I'll be finished. Oh, oh, y'all. Ooh, 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 ooh. Number eight. Y'all go shout on number eight. It's verse number eight. The Lord is merciful and gracious. I thought the whole 12 o'clock club and party and crowd at 12 would shout and celebrate that the Lord is merciful and gracious. Do y'all see that in verse 8? No, y'all don't see it. He further expounds upon it and says, the Lord is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Slow to get angry. Y'all ever met somebody get angry quick? Thank God he don't get angry quick. He's slow to anger and he abounds in mercy. I love that word right there. He's abounding in mercy. And, and, and matter of fact, verse number nine says, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Sometimes people can be angry and keep staying angry with you for a long time. Verse 10 says, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquity. Give God a praise. He did not give me what I deserve. Ooh, that's what mercy is. God don't give you what you deserve. That's enough to shout about, dance about. Somebody ought to be running around the building. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. I like that. I give God the praise for that. that. That is incredible. That's wonderful. That's worthy of a shout and a praise and a thank. Matter of fact, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, I'm so glad that God is gracious to me. Verse 11 says, has, For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. His mercy is astronomical, greater than I can define. He was better than me than I deserve. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think about what I should have got, when I think about the punishment that should have come my way, when I think about how good God has been to me, I can't help but give him the glory and the shout. Somebody give him a shout. The gun should have went off. You should have been dead. The disease should have rat, rat, should have taken your body out. The accident should have happened. You should have gone through. God should have punished you. But instead, he held back and gave you mercy. That's why I got to serve him. He's a merciful God. That's why I got to praise him. He's a merciful God. Somebody go ahead and give him a shout and say, thank God for his mercy. I wish I had some people who are, who are like me, who is grateful to the bottom of your soul for how good God has been to you. That's, a, that's why I'm saved. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody's in this camp that doesn't have that 
mercy. It's time for you to get right with God and accept Jesus and allow that mercy to plead your case and stand before God who should judge you, but instead of judging you, he can give you mercy. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, I want some mercy. Verse 11 says, so great is his mercy toward us. Great is his mercy toward us. Great is his mercy. Great, magnanimous, humongous, beyond description is his mercy toward us. Yeah, you deserve judgment. Yeah, you should go straight to hell. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. But when you get saved, he gives you his mercy. Okay, y'all still ain't got it. Look at let me let me give you number nine. It, it, it will maybe this will help you. Verse here's verse number nine. Here's num, point number nine in verse twelve. Somebody gonna shout. Ushers uh, guard the door. Somebody gonna jump up and run out of here. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. from the west the east don't meet the west the west don't meet the east God takes our transgressions and removes them far away oh I feel a shout a shout a shout I feel somebody shouting up in the camp he's removed it from us removed taking it distance way away from us now why is that important why am I spending all this time on all of this about the mercy of God and and the graciousness of God and he's removed our transgression because the devil likes to play a game with us and the devil will keep reminding you of your sins and your failures and he will torment you and frustrate you and tell you that God has not forgiven you and God don't love you and the devil will tell you that God is punishing you and you going through what you're going through because God's whipping you and paying you back let's set the record straight God is not paying you back all the sin you done done ain't enough pay back in the world for God to pay you back except for him to send you to hell but when you got saved, he dismissed the charges. It's not that we're not guilty. We are guilty, but oh, give God the praise. He has removed it from. I thought the 12 o'clock crowd would huck and a buck and I thought y'all would shout and run and give God praise when you think about all the nasty things you did and all the wrong things you did and all the bad things you did. I thought you would give God a shout that he has removed it far from you. Somebody go and shake three or four people's hands and say, I'm guilty, but he took it far away from me. Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm giving him the praise. He released me. He freed me. He washed me. He delivered me. He made me whole. Hey, hey, bless the name of Jesus. Bless his wonderful name. That's why I serve Jesus. That's why I serve him. He wiped my slate clean. Won't he make you clean? Inside. Won't he wash you? On the inside. Won't he fix you? On the inside. me when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my soul cries out hallelujah thank God he saved me hey
time the devil starts reminding you of your past, you got to learn to do like this. What does that mean? As far as the east is from the west, God has removed. It's no longer in the picture. It's no longer considered. My slate has been washed clean. great news I want you to remember this you got to get this theology down people will remember your sins people will recount them but the God that we serve matter of fact when your wife come to you and start running down your mess When y'all go, when y'all leave today, go to your cars while you're walking on your cars, look around the parking lot, you're gonna see some brothers walking around they're just doing just like this. I wish I had a praying crowd with me. I wish I had somebody who don't mind giving God the praise that they are far, far away. I'm not reminded about it. He has separated me. I got one more for you. Verse 14. It says, He remembers our frame that we are dust. That's number 10. He remembers our frame. We some jacked up jokers. We can't live right by our own power or might if we try, because we are dust. He remembers it. You can't live right if you tried. Y'all supposed to say amen on that. Why y'all get quiet on that point right there? Y'all supposed to say that's true. You can't live right in your own strength and power. That's the problem with some of y'all. That's why you ain't joined church, ain't got saved. You think you can straighten it out. You can't straighten it out. You can't flip the script. You can't change your life. You need help. Have enough sense to give your life to Jesus. That's what you need to do. Because he will give you the power to do right. And help you live right. And help you make the right choices. He, he can help you live holy. He remembers that we are dust. Look at your neighbor and say, you just dust. You dirt. That's all you is, is dirt. And he remembers. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a shout, say, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm saved. I got a whole string of benefits. I'm glad I'm following Jesus. I'm glad he's my Lord. Somebody today needs to get that Jesus. Where are you? Come on down here real quick. You're not saved. You're not right. You're backslidden. You're unsure. Just get on up and come on down here. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, for your slate to be wiped clean. He made provisions for your blood to be washed away. His, his blood to wash away your sins. 
and just humble yourself and say, you know what, I'm going to come and give him my life and give him my heart. Unsaved, backslidden, you drifted away from God, or you're not sure. That's right, come on. That's right, come on, somebody else. Don't be ashamed, don't Come be afraid. Make your way down here right today, right now. To Christ. Come on, say it. He will give you brand new life. New life abundantly. Unsaved, we're calling for you to come. Backslidden, calling for you to come. Unsure, calling for you to come. Already saved, but you need a church home. You come too. You're already walking with God, but you need to be connected with the church. You come as well, right now as well. Come. be tragic for you to come here and not be right with God and walk out of here the same way you came and for your life something to happen and you don't get the opportunity to get it right with God right now is the opportunity to get right with God the blood is running warm in your veins you have the activities of your limbs this is the time to come right now right this morning Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shout for these souls here today. All right, the person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you in the back. They're going to talk to you, find out where you are. Some of you have come to get saved. You're going to get saved. 
Some of you coming to rededicate, you're going to rededicate. Come on, I'll wait for you. Come on. Hallelujah. So proud of you. Praise the Lord. Step right down here. Some of you are coming to get saved. You're going to get saved. Some of you are coming to rededicate. You're going to get reconnected. Some of you are not sure. You're going to get assurance. Some of you are already saved. You're coming to join our church. This here is a great church for you to be a part of. Amen. We're proud of you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that has come forward today. Manifest yourself to them. Cleanse them. Give them faith towards you, almighty God. Let them, let them uh, put their faith in you. Let them repent of how they've lived. Plant them in your vineyard and fill them with the Spirit is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Come here. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to pray for this dear woman of God who came down and said she wants healing. We're going to believe the Lord for your healing, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for you to heal her body from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you would renew her strength in every every and every capacity. Rebuke the hand of the enemy, God, and restore her body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We believe in God for that. I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Be blessed. I love you.